could you just define non-fungible token? A non-fungible token technically is pretty boring. It's just basically a unique identifier that can be assigned to some digital asset like an image. It's like the title for your car. The title conveys a sense of ownership for a possession of the title, conveys ownership of the vehicle, but the vehicle is still something that's completely separate. So the non-fungible token is really a tradable representation um, for digital assets like pictures and videos and pretty much whatever you want it to be these days. Even if you destroyed the original, there would still be identical copies around. You can buy an old dresser and it's kind of an old dresser. But if that old dresser once sat in George Washington's mansion, the fact that it came from George Washington's mansion is what really adds value and creates value in that. This is why Jack Dorsey's first tweet goes for almost, yeah. Anybody can go out and make a copy of the tweet. Who cares? But only one person can own Jack Dorsey's NFT that he created for it. The actual first tweet and the text in it and a picture of it, whatever, Anybody can get that. What makes it valuable is somebody believes that something that Jack Dorsey created as an NFT has value. And that's what drives the marketplace. Who is making money off of the creation and sale and transfer of NFTs? As we saw with cryptocurrencies, it went through this transition from socially interesting thing to financially driven thing. People look at the skyrocketing prices on some of these NFTs, and they're not in it to own the NFTs, they're in it to own the margin. It's an economy. With all of the complexities that go on with the economy, you have some core producers of goods, and those core producers are finding new ways to monetize. You have consumers of those goods who, in some cases, are getting, as you pointed out, intrinsic value from them. And then you have the ones who are really the market makers, the ones who are taking advantage. They don't really care as much about the particular details of what's being traded, as long as they can predict the value exchange of what's being traded and money off of it. It really is an economy. And that's kind of the cool part about it. We've talked for years about how we would build a data economy. And one has emerged and it has some very, very rich and interesting dynamics. Never miss an episode of What That Means with Camille by following us on YouTube. You can also find episodes wherever you get your podcasts.